I feel like Ant Catcher significantly less romantic than a than rat, rat catcher. catcher. I don't think either are very romantic. Yeah, but at least I mean the rat catcher. You have that whole scene where he's like kind of flexing that he's a really good rat catcher, and he's I mean like that really is true. Strategic about it. That was kind of hot. That is true. But the, I guess I will say so. This this conversation is happening because I had ants in my room for three weeks, and it was terrible. It was a terrible time for me. Thank you very much. Um. I do think sorrows, <laughs> sorrows, prayers. I do think if some man would have like come into my room and caught all the ants and murdered them in front of me, I would have just like disrobed right there. So like I do understand. I do love a good spontaneous orgasm. Uh huh. I I would have just come right there. <laughs> like it would have been great. Well, but the thing with that is like you can't you can't really like catch all the ants. <laughs> it's just poking one. Yeah, he's just he's just squishing individual ants, and that doesn't like solve the problem because where are they coming from? He'd have to have like an ant eater, a spider in his instead of the like terriers. Yeah, and um, yes, there's... an ant eater and a spider. He has a whole he has a setup. This fictional man, the love of my life, actually. I want a satirical retelling of the proposition which is already a retelling of my fair lady which is already a retelling of pygmalion which is already a retelling of the myth of pygmalion and in this retelling of a retelling of a retelling of a retelling i lost count of a retelling question mark it it's it's an ant catcher period facts (laughs) it is facts honestly i'm now so warmed up to the idea of an ant catcher because they are horrible. I hate them so much. And then and then the next one, the, the sequel, can be Mosquito Catcher. Because wouldn't you just love someone to just kill all the mosquitoes around you? Just, like, stand by you and just swat them so you don't have to do it? I mean, I would rather it were, like, a sexy inventor who, like, figured out a way to eradicate mosquitoes. Well, that's even better. Drop that's... them all somewhere. Do we think there is me. a mosquito romance? There must be, right? Oh, God. You know how, like, well, technically, cannibalism <laughs> is inherently tied to the erotic. erotic? M- what are mi- I mean, mosquitoes aren't cannibals, but they so don't mosquitoes drink are blood. just bite-sized vampires, right? So, like, paranormal romance. I'm like 100 percent confident that somewhere someone has written a mosquito romance. I mean, mosquito man on... sounds kind of sexy, like Mothman, like mosquito, man, like just a few uh, more, like you know, cryptids. Yeah. Um, Syllables is what I was going for. Oh, I sorry. I, well, but also cryptids. Yeah. I mean, there is there is Ant-Man. That's which is, true. You know. Ant-Man's not really an ant, though. Or, like, no, even related to ants, Paul except Rudd. that he's ant-sized sometimes. He is Paul That Rudd. is true. He so is he Paul could Rudd. have a battle. He could battle all the ants Ooh. rather than just squash them. Now, that's also, sexy. Yeah. I just think... Actually, but could you imagine... Hang on, time out. Can you imagine... <laughs> You call, like, an exterminator. Paul Rudd shows up at your house. You're like, whoa, Paul Rudd. He's like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Paul Rudd. Um, He goes in. He's like, don't worry. I'm here to take care of the ants. You're like, okay, great. Do you have, like, where's your exterminator kit? Like, where's your stuff? And he's like, no need. He, in front of your eyes, shrinks to the size of an ant. You're like, Paul Rudd? Question mark? And then you watch as a tiny battle plays out in front of you. Sparta! <laughs> like, like imagine a Marvel movie ultimate battle, like you know where it's like whoa, yeah. like all close up and really intense. Except then it zooms out, mm-hmm. and it's just so tiny because it's just tiny Paul Rudd versus a bunch of ants. I just frequently think about the pro ant propaganda movie, the Ant Bully. I would bully the fuck out of ants. I'm sorry, <laughs> they are terrible when they're in my house. Outside, fine. I guess I'm not going to bully them out there. But also, they suck outside. So I will. My, my dad because I'll, bullies them. Yeah, because I'll be like ant? sitting. Because <laughs> I'll be like sitting and then they'll be on me. And I'm like, I don't want you on me. Unless you're Paul Rudd. Like, so, I mean, I just hate ants so much. Didn't think I would love a rat catcher so much. You've you've already read that one, the rat catcher's daughter. Yeah, but I the rat catcher's daughter isn't actually about yeah, a Yeah, but you at least knew... Like, I guess I knew tangentially what a rat catcher was, but this is the first time I've actively, like, engaged the concept of a rat catcher. I mean... And engage we did. You don't really engage with the concept of a rat catcher and the rat catcher's daughter either. 
for context, yes. the Rat Catcher's Daughter is a novella by K.J. Charles. It's mm-hmm. a prequel to the... Oh... I can't remember. Oh, I think it's a duology oh, oh. of, like... Uh, there are these two, like, gangster guys in, like, the, I don't know, 20s, 30s, something like that. 1910. I don't know. <laughs> the point is they're, like, gangster guys. You know? The Don, if you will. Uh, <laughs> it is a very short four-chapter novella. It's, like, a short story it's mm-hmm. not even really a novella um with a i believe a trans heroine um although she's kind of uh, gender non-conforming mm-hmm. we'll say it's it's not quite that straightforward um and an ace hero um and the heroine's like a, a performer uh like a vaudeville type performer and uh she gets involved with some bad guys and then other guy the gangsters show up and save her and it was for their friend who just was like her biggest fan but like was really embarrassed that they did that and they were like yeah you have to go meet her and he was like oh my god you guys are so embarrassing she's not gonna want to meet me and then they have a very lovely romance and then he gets kidnapped by uh, the bad guys and somebody gets thrown out a window sorry dropped out a window I should yeah it was crazy it was actually very good though and it's called the rat catcher's daughter not because I think yeah, not because she's actually the daughter of a policeman, not a rat. Well, that is just um, what <laughs> it's because there's a song that um, is about the rat catcher's daughter. Um, we are really getting the six story. degrees. <laughs> it ties into the story, and they reference it and gotcha. talk about it. And the bit is that he's like, "Oh, your dad's a cop. You really are a rat catcher's daughter." Like, <laughs> I see. Um. Anyway, so it's not about rat catchers, really, huh. in any way, except that that song. I think she performs it. That's so fascinating. I didn't know all the things that went into rat catching and no. dogs and ferrets, though. That was all news no. to me. No, I learned a lot. It was really interesting. Mm-hmm. I felt like Winnie, where he was like, hang on, let me flex for you. <laughs> let me talk you through the strategy. I was like, Meg, <laughs> talk me through the strategy. I love him. Welcome to Romance Your TBR. Before we get into any really spoilers. Yeah. Oh, also, the name of the book that we're talking about yeah. is The Proposition by Judith Ivory. We it have sure is. sometimes not said that. So <laughs> we are. It's in the doing title. I, well, sometimes it's not because the title is going to be a lesson. <laughs> it's within six degrees of the podcast. You can find it. Yeah. The Proposition so. by Judith Ivory. Welcome to Old School mm-hmm. School. Classes in yeah. the session. With guest really lecturer is. Judith Ivory. Not really, uh, like, she's not here. Is Judith no. Ivory even alive? I don't know. I don't it, know. I Not a clue, but she's From not the here. veil. From beyond the veil. <laughs> um, it, she's mm-hmm. guest lecturing through the written word. Mm-hmm. Or the spoken word, in my case. I did the audiobook. You did. I read it, and then I listened to the sample, which was the great leg scene at the beginning, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, I really enjoyed the audiobook specifically because uh, of the dialectical thing. Yeah, I could see that. That was really, especially because the, I don't know who the narrator is, um, but the way he performs it, you can hear him changing the accent little by little as he goes through. Oh, that's fun. It like kind of slowly gets more refined and then you can go back and forth when he switches between his like upper class and then the Cornwall slash Mm -hmm. whatever his weird little medley of... Was there like East London in there? I don't know. It was. A I don't lot of remember. Happening. Um, I did see a review actually from KJ. I know, Hall. I know. It was ripping this book apart, and I was I like, "Well, that's a couple funny. of the points. The rest of them, not I, so much." I I did to an extent, but I was also like, "Heart hands, no heart hands." There were and, a couple of things that I yeah. was like, "Yes." However, the main one was uh, that I was very much on the same page with, like, disappointed that he was secretly a Duke's son, because it did feel like it yeah. undermined yeah. the whole rest of the book. <laughs> also, I just, to get to the heart of the matter, incest. Um, I don't think it's, it's not close enough. It, no, I, go- I, go- I went down some <laughs> rabbit holes last night, okay? So... The family tree that they put in this book is five people. So, like, to me, that's still only five people. <laughs> and that's not a lot. Yeah, but, but aren't they already so got into it's, the removed? It is. So it's a second cousin once removed. Yeah. Once so, you get into the removed. But, but for me, the point too far was the last names being the same. 
And I was like, that's just a little too close. Yeah, but you could have like distant, distant cousins and happen to have the same. You could, but I don't like it. I don't like it. And also, people on Quora staunchly defend marrying your first cousin, if you were curious. Well, that's a little too close. So there was a lot going on in the rabbit hole that I dug. Oh. Um, they were like blood relatives, but then I was like, is a second cousin cousin once removed a blood relative? And then Google's like, yes, but then they were like, only blood relatives is incest, but then that's like your mother or like your cousins, but then they're saying like nephew. And I'm like, I don't know. I just think that I just would prefer not. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't work today, but I also just didn't care. Um, I cared enough to Google the exact phrase is a second cousin once removed incestuous i mean are second cousins even incestuous i thought only first cousin was. listen well, i would that's not marry the thing. a second there's cousin there's I a whole like, debate that makes on, sense on on it like what is a blood relative because they technically share you like what constitutes sure. it's a whole thing i just also i think right now it's really hard to like conceptualize even the first cousin thing because i was raised so closely with my cousins that that would be funky well, I think first cousins are still incest. But that people are saying it's not. Like, it's legal in, like, 20-some states. That doesn't mean jack shit. I I don't trust 20-some states. I don't trust (laughs) no states. It was just so interesting to see people being like, no, your first cousin isn't incest. Like, so many people. (laughs) And I was like, is it? I feel like even so. if legally it's not, guess what it is. Um, yeah, well that that's where I, I ended up. Argument for second cousin and beyond not. Yeah, and my Especially lesson because he's like removed and whatever. The the lesson that I learned was second cousins once removed are fair game question mark. And that's I truly not learned, the lesson that I took. From I this truly book. learned that lesson because I had to Google it, and technically, they're fair game for many people. On let's, the internet. Let's back up, shall we? Now that we've tackled the end, I was just going to say KJ Charles in mm-hmm. the review had a lot to say about like the dialect is all wrong and doesn't sound like anybody from Cornwall they've ever met, which I think she, I think KJ Charles uses she, her. Um, yeah. It doesn't sound like anybody from Cornwall that she's ever met, to which I would say the whole point is that he doesn't sound like he's he's got a bunch of things. He's mm-hmm. not supposed to sound like he's from Cornwall. Like, that's why his accent is so unique. Mm-hmm. So whatever. And then also, like, about how writing without using the, like, specific phonetic language doesn't work. And I'm like, you're – it's a it's a, it's a a romance novel. You- <laughs> and, it, and it worked. Like, it did what it needed to do for me, at least. I wanted with right. no – I mean, I guess, like, if you're, like – if you have experience with if you're that a stuff, it could be linguistics annoying. linguistics professor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. However – Can you hear the clock uh, running? Huh? There's a clock in here, I think. <laughs> oh, I heard like a chime right or something. Nope, there's a clock over there. Um, I'm in my father's office because the air conditioner upstairs slash my room is uh, out a of bro- mission. It's fine. It's only a hundred degrees during the day. That's disgusting. It's fine. The air conditioner downstairs works. Um, so we're down here, and there's a clock chiming. I don't know how he lives like this that would drive me insane anyway um so yeah she was talking about that and then yeah i didn't care about that i liked how the narrator did it yeah i and i thought reading it worked too because like i mean because it was like spelled like when it was bloody like how you'd pronounce bloody Mm -hmm. it was like b l E U or E W D Y, so like blue D. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't know how the guy. Like I don't care about pronunciations. I'm not reading this book to know how to pronounce things like he was pronouncing them. Yeah, so I like, think it would have driven me crazy trying to read the physical copy. Mm, I already see, I just, like I, even Scottish and stuff. I'm like, I need to hear something. I say. well, it was way better than Scottish because like it would do in, in italics. It would like italicize how he said it. So like you would get to read. Sure. Like it's bloody, like normal. Right. And then it would be like italicized blue. No, but like I'm sh- saying like I yeah. it would bother me not he- knowing how to not hear knowing. That in my oh, head. I would need. Oh, to, I see. I I like to be able to hear it. Mm. I see. Yeah, for me, when I read like the Scottish, like um, Lindsay Sands is the most recent one in her like Highlander series. It was a great book, but it took me so long to read because I just could not like. It was so there were so many like hyphens and 
stuff that it just took so long. Um, so that didn't happen here. But yeah, I could see where I just didn't. Yeah, that doesn't really bother me. I'm the opposite. Yeah, I just didn't care about knowing how to pronounce things. See, that was so part of way. the charm for me was hearing mm-hmm. the narrative. Like he would do all the little like love, lovey, which he would always do even once he had his accent, which was fun and charming. Mm-hmm. Anyway, back to the beginning. The proposition. <laughs> the I beginning is some other beginning. Ivory, end. my accent coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Judith Ivory. Um, Ivory. <laughs> Speaking of Ivory. accents. Ivory. Um. Oh yeah, don't you know? Up in here in Minnesota, we'll do it Irish. Uh, oh my god! No, I only do Minnesota because that I, I feel like I won't embarrass myself. But any sure. other accent will be embarrassing. I mean, me. the Minnesota accent is inherently embarrassing. It is. So like, I've embraced that. But like, I know how to do it. I like, see. oh yeah, get the tapioca on your front porch, don't you? Know? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And the thing is, like, I can definitely hear it in my O's. And, like, mm-hmm. some words that I say uh, can't, for the life of me, understand bagel, how I say that wrong. I've lived I don't on know both how coasts. you possibly could not hear the difference. I, I truly cannot. So, like, part of that is maybe why I just don't care about pronunciations in these books because I just I, – I don't. But I've lived on both coasts now, and everyone does a little chuckle yeah, because whenever it's I say bagel. Long. And I just don't understand that. I don't know what I'm doing. They, they'll be like bagel. And I'm like bagel. They'll be like bagel. No, ba-. what they're like, saying is know. bagel. Like say it as if it was B A Y. Bagel. Bagel. That was right. But bagel. But, no, but bagel. you're saying bagel. Bagel. But that is right. No, it's not. It's bagel, not bagel. I just Your think... mouth should be more closed. I just don't agree. Where is Winnie? <laughs> I need you. Am I the Mick Tremor? Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, he gets did major you do credit. Your homework, by the way. Did you watch My Fair Lady? I did not yet, but I talked to my mom about it. <laughs> Doesn't count, <laughs> but okay. So she likes the movie. She talked to me. She was like, "It was sad because she talked about how Audrey Hepburn recorded all the songs, mm-hmm. and then they didn't like it." She's like, oh, mm-hmm. "I thought that was really sad." Mm-hmm. <laughs> But she's like, I, I like mean, her really as a, in the fairly movie. standard for the time period to have yeah. another singer, but like brutal to record them all and then be like, yeah, you're shit. Yeah. yeah. So we had that whole conversation. I mean, it was like three minutes before I had to go to a meeting, but like, so I said we need to watch it. I just we'll feel like you it. would really appreciate a lot of the references in the book. But the fun thing is that I've seen Trading Places at least like twice every Christmas. And this book is so similar to Trading Places. So, like, I got some different levels going on. Could it perhaps be because Trading Places yes. is similar to My Fair Lady? Yes. But without having seen My Fair Lady, but having seen <laughs> Trading Places, I can make inferences. And they worked. No, and I was like, haha. More references. I guess, but I'm like, also I not one to, to pick up things. Dancing on a tabletop, and I was like, "Wow, this is so I could have danced all night." Coded. Mm, is like, that a song? Yes, it's a great mm. song, but it's also different. It was like playing on the theme because mm-hmm. in the show they're celebrating Henry Higgins' accomplishment and like getting her to speak right, and they are dancing and mm-hmm. celebrating that. Whereas in this, the Henry Higgins character is also having the celebration, but it's not about. Okay. <laughs> Okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> Everything is fine. I just think it's an excuse to watch the movie, then listen to the audiobook and see how that goes. I mean, I'm not going to tell you not to do that yeah. as long as the movie gets watched. It will at some point. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I actually took notes on this book. <gasps> um, guys. I know. It only happens occasionally when I I'm did feeling too, but they're it. Not- usually. I don't think they're very... Oh, I I took a lot of notes. I figure we can just go chronologically. Because I'm yeah. sure there will be things to discuss. Um, yes. I mean, my first note... Since you mentioned that the, the leg scene is the, the sample, my first note is obsessed with everything about this intro. The mouse... The yearning for mud, which is hilarious. <laughs> uh, the long legs and garters. 
Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, because I actually read the summary. Mm-hmm. And so in the summary, what? there's... I, I took know. notes. You read, you read the, the summary. summary. Who are we? <laughs> Who are we? Who Now but... we're trading places. <laughs> I'm Inga from Sweden. Um... <laughs> But you're wearing later hosen. Um and I saw the in parentheses and great legs too, or whatever it says, and I was like, that's so odd. Why are they talking about her legs in in this summary? And then I read the first chapter and I was like, Oh, oh. that's why they're talking about her legs. This is hilarious. Because the legs are relevant. <laughs> it was so funny. So it was a great time to have read the summary. Because it, it just, just made me chuckle. Such a like, I love a good opening chapter. Mm-hmm. Heartbreaker that opens with the, uh, yeah. the wedding mm-hmm. that goes to absolute chaos. Like, there, any time that a book is like, here's the most insane first scene you've ever mm-hmm. read. I'm like, thank you. That is what I needed. Mm-hmm. Let's get to jazz for the rest of it. Yeah. So it really was like, he's on the ground. There are women... <laughs> Standing on tables around him. You're like, why the fuck? He's like, I've seen the mouse. You're like, the mouse? (laughs) They're like asking him questions. He's like, I should just get this mouth. But distraction, really long legs. They don't even like, I don't even think they reference the mouse like at first. You're like, what is this man doing? Why is he on the ground? What is he doing? (laughs) And then fully just like checking out a woman's legs via a mirror that he can Uh only see because he's on the ground. There's like a mouse. These women are like, can you get the mouse out of here, please? And he's uh-huh. like, hold that thought, everyone. I just need you to be real quiet. This is the, the birds. Longest just kidding. Legs it's the mouse. I've ever seen. You're like, mm-hmm. Mick's fascination with legs is dead ass one of the funniest parts of this book. Well, and then at the end, there's like a scene where he like has a dream where he's like small and like looking around and sees a bunch of legs. What kind of Freudian like, oh ass God. shit is this? <laughs> I'm like, oh. Okay. Yeah. Maria loves those legs. Loves them. And I support his love because truly they're bargaining for him Hang to on, look at them. We're not legs. there yet. I know. But just that whole thing, say what you want, but I'll say wee hee, woo hoo, yee hee. <laughs> and you may quote me on that. <laughs> you may. Um, you may. Actually, one of my next, so my next note is Edwina is so funny as a Henry Higgins character because she's so into the bet. And if you had seen My Fair Lady, <clears throat> you would this know. This is just shading me this entire day. <laughs> it's just going to, every single note, it's just going to be like, well, if you had read My Fair Lady, I'm just kidding. Most of them are like that. But Henry Higgins is also very into the bet, but for different reasons. Um, I thought you just weren't going to tell me the reason. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I, it, it's really just more i mean not entirely different reasons he really just wants to show his prowess like i can't i don't know remember if he's the one who suggests it but he definitely goes along with it um the dang, it's been a hot minute since i've seen this movie i need to remember how it starts i remember him very being very into it but specifically because he's like i'm the greatest like linguist in the world basically He's super cocky about it. And he's like, oh, yeah, I can definitely do that. No problem. And so Edwina is funny to me because that's that, like, very masculine mm-hmm. character type of, like, oh, hell, yeah, I can do that. Let's go. <laughs> and she had the bit about um, sticking it to her cousin or her Oh, yeah. Or Edwina Who was knows? like, I'm the best. <laughs> Play Let's little do joke. it. Mm. And I just, I also loved how there was no, like, the bet, which I guess could be in My Fair Lady. Like, if he was into it, I don't know if Eliza Doolittle, I'm assuming she knew. I don't know if she knew. She knew. She She had to agree. She had to come move into his house and do all the lessons and stuff. So I liked that. Um, Because, like, in other ones, you know, like, she's all that, training places. Like, they don't know about the bet or, like, variations of it until later on. You have the iconic quote, am I a fucking bet? I mean, iconic, but not. Not here because they knew, which I liked. Yeah, I think I mean, like oh, Bookshop Cinderella by Laura Lee Gerke mm-hmm. is a closer My Fair Lady retelling than something like She's All That mm-hmm. because uh, Eliza's in on it. Like she shows up and is like, mm-hmm. "I'd like you to help me get a job." Basically, 
if I'm mm-hmm. recalling correctly. Holy shit, what goes on in the beginning of this movie? I can her tell you Eli- all the musical numbers, <laughs> but like priorities are set. So her name's like Eliza Doolittle, right? Yes. So okay. it's funny that his name is Mick Tremore. More, little, little more. I thought that oh, was huh. I wonder if that, I mean, it must, it's probably intentional. I, I'm assuming I noticed it because, and then I was like, I don't know if it is, but. Oh, you know what? She asks for lessons. I was thinking she had just asked for, okay. So Higgins' friend shows up and Higgins boasts to him. They see her as a flower girl selling flowers mm-hmm. and she wants to own a flower shop, but she's got a really thick Cockney accent and that okay. means she's essentially never going to be able to do that. And Higgins is like flexing. And he boasts to everyone in a song that he could even teach her (laughs) to speak so well that he could pass her off as a duchess. Uh, And she shows up at his house the next day and is like, did you mean what you said? So teach me. And they're like, bet. And his friend is like, I'll pay for it. No, yeah, he says he'll pay for it if Higgins can do it. Okay. Um. But, like, okay, so the bath scene is an explicit reference <laughs> to My Fair Lady. But instead of, like, fun. Mick just shoving the guy in the bath, <laughs> icon, legend, uh, Eliza just fucking howls. She loses her goddamn mind. She mm-hmm. and she has this really awful moving the microphone away from myself. <laughs> because she repeatedly, when she's up, she, upset, she'll do this, Ow! like, type scream. And it's the, like... <laughs> like worst kind of caterwauling and she does that all through them trying to force her into a bathtub it is a nightmare truly and so i appreciate that mick at least didn't do that i am i appreciate him bodying the guy just right in there he's like you're not undressing me he didn't body him he picked him up and fully dunked him <laughs> and just left him there and then he leaves which was dramatic and then he comes back yeah like Two Which minutes I later. I was like, oh. It was very charming. He really came back and was like, I'm really sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait. We've skipped ahead. Oh, no. Back into my notes. I have the quote, that's a lot of woman lengthwise speaking. <laughs> with just, by he's so funny. Because, by he's so it funny. That's a lot of woman lengthwise. <laughs> lengthwise speaking. Um, and then uh, his dreams are just for money and legs. Yeah. That's like all of his aspira- aspirations. He's like, I would like to have a lot of money and just, um, some very long legs. I just Not love the me. commitment to legs. I, that's all he wants. I just want to talk to Judith. She was she, like, I, she had to have been. Legs. I can just see her being like, I'm going to create an environment so full of legs. <laughs> she did. She really did. And she specifically gave him that thing at the end. <laughs> legs all around me. Um, then we get to, uh, I noted the bath and Eliza versus Mick. Mm-hmm. Um, iconic. Oh, the fight about the mustache. One of my favorite quotes, the mustache stay where it be on the lip. The mustache. The, the mustache, mustache stay where it be on the on lip. On the lip. I love my lips. <laughs> she had a beard and it felt weird. Oh, dear. Silly songs with Larry. No. Oh. Six a- degrees, three degrees of Veggie Tales. Really, we gotta cut that ratio in half. Um, the mustache. We talked, and I think we cut it, or it wasn't even recorded. I don't know. We're both not mustache people, unless it's like a Beverly Jenkins hero, because yep. they fuck. They're great. Indigo. <laughs> <they> fuck. <laughs> I mean, They're <laughs> hot. <laughs> That man. One thing about a Beverly Jenkins hero, he may have a mustache, but he sure can fuck. So hot. Um, so like I was pro getting rid of the mustache, but then I felt bad about it because he loves his mustache so much. So did Winnie. I know, but then I was like, but also no mustache. But also no mustache. I did like at the very end when she was like, "Okay, it worked out." But yeah. I like that we at least got rid of it Didn't, for the time being. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. I think I just I just don't. It takes a – I mean, he is a special man. It takes a special man to wear a mustache. And maybe I just need to get to know him a little bit 
before he whips that out. You know? Mm hmm. <laughs> so. I just, it was so, well, I guess we'll get there in a second, actually. I just, the scene where he's like, the next day, mm -hmm. he's going to shave and he's like, Phantom. he has that whole internal mm -hmm. battle of like, I can grow my mustache big and then he shaves it anyway because he's like, mm, for Winnie. <laughs> Real. Ugh. It just. Mm. Speaking of things so that funny. that man did, uh, singing in the garden. Mm hmm. And like singing back to her. Yep. <laughs> and she was so embarrassed. And he was like, why? Why stop? Keep sing. He said, I sing. You sing. <laughs> Give you a cookie. We sing. Got me a cookie. <laughs> Give you a cookie. Got you a cookie, man. <laughs> Give me a cookie. Got you a cookie. <laughs> he said, I'm in my Phantom of the Opera era. He did. Sing for me. Sing to me, Paolo. Ooh, he also era. said that <laughs> a different era but just as iconic and life-changing uh, i don't know if i would put those on the same level but yeah you're right lizzie mcguire tops <laughs> i figured you were gonna say something like that but i don't mm. you opened my uh, triple triple word in scrabble you, you gave it to me you gave me that so thank you you're welcome um I just weep. That's all. That that was my. I literally my note is singing in the garden, and then the like sobbing emoji. <laughs> That's the whole note. Just so much of this book was just me going ah. Facts. And it was cute. Really. Um. My next note. The mustache versus legs agreement. I and then I interrupted my own note to say fifteen minutes. <laughs> That is a lot of minutes. That's so many. I, I mean, they settled on ten, but even that, I was and like, then it was, and then it was five, there? like broken up into the five. Sure, and the but five. Even just for the and five then the one. minutes, I wouldn't want it, but I supported the mission of it. <laughs> but I was like, if I had to just stand there, like that. <laughs> I understand why Winnie and I are not on the same page about this. I would rather mm -hmm. he touch me for five minutes. That yeah. Then just standing there is just too much just pressure. Look at me, and I mean, she felt it. Yeah, she almost passed out at the end, and I was like relatable. Also, the drama of, or like, I guess the dramatic irony of us knowing that she was the pair of legs, oh, and yeah. he didn't know. Well, I think he and did know by that point, he, right? By that point, he did. But like the leading up to it, when he like thought, and he's like, "Oh no, that's not her." Like mm -hmm. he like had the thought, dismissed it, and then when he like. He figures it out because he, like, asks, like, you got this these dresses? Like, what shop? And she's like, why do you care? But it, it was this one. And he's like, oh, my God. And then he's, like, leaning back on his chair and, like, trying to, like, see under her skirt. And she's like, why are you doing that? And he just keeps looking. And then he, like, lifts it up with the pencil. It's just so funny. I just was so excited for him to finally realize that they were the legs that he's been looking for. <laughs> Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Your yeah, legs, legs are my only <laughs> Oh, it's hard to the believe legs. that he couldn't see. Is but this the legs were always there beside him. Oh, God. <laughs> We've got High School Musical? Yeah. That's what that is? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she vibes, honestly. She was the pair of legs he was looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, that noted, I do love... This is related to my next note, but within this same 15 minutes of staring at your leg, well, 10 minutes broken up of staring at your legs scene. Um, King. Uh, <laughs> That's a dramatically pause, look into the distance, I, I count just, to 10. That was, I King. was literally, I was like laying in bed listening to this audiobook, and I opened my eyes and my mouth, like jaw dropped, literally. Because for real, for real. Judith Ivory was like, I'm going to write the most insane proposition. Mm-hmm. A, a proposition no one in their right mind would make, and yet here we are. I just said, we're going to make history. And then she did. Um, and then she did. This wasn't the point that I was coming to. The point that I was coming to was that I love in a romance novel when the heroine or 
yeah, it's pretty much always the heroine because men traditionally have more power. Mm -hmm. Um, figures out that she like her seduction skills or whatever, like just by nature of existing, she has power over him. These legs. Yeah. And she quite literally, like, has the thought that she had power over him because mm-hmm. of how badly he wanted to stare at her legs. <laughs> and I, I ate it up. I said, yes, you do, Winnie. Yes, yes you do have power over him. Mm. The insanity <laughs> of him being, like, stand on the table. Lifts her onto the table. And then she's, like, standing there with her garters down or like everything down but then she's like i look like ridiculous and then she has to like take off her well, shoes like stockings off and she's like that's yeah. not what we agreed and he said yeah. yes the fuck it is stockings off you can keep your bloomers but stockings mm-hmm. off and then she's like i can't leave these around my ankles Mm-hmm. and then he's watching the whole thing in the <laughs> class because he's insane Ugh. because he's insane hmm Oh, and then her sobbing. Yeah. Oh, my heart. Just that like break my head heart a bit. against the wall. Just so it was. I was like, oh my god. I think that really is the point where I was like, oh, she's repressed, repressed. Like, uh-huh. This is not your standard. Oh, she's a yeah. Because there she was. Doesn't want you to like. Because then there was a bit later on where she was like the sh- like the shame she felt for like wanting his attentions or like feeling like lust and stuff um i highlighted that because there were some reviews that didn't like um the dub con and like the him pressuring i really think that that was him pressuring her because i saw some of those same reviews and i don't Mm -hmm. i mean to be clear i think it's i think it's a converse yeah like i think yeah yeah but it should be noted that he did immediately stop and, like, fully, mm-hmm. you know, stop, back up, whatever, as soon as she, like, clearly was not comfortable. Mm-hmm. But also, there has to be a point where, like, she was so uncomfortable with this idea of, like, her own body and feeling pleasure mm-hmm. that if he hadn't put some pressure on her, she quite literally never would, would have. Would not have known. She wouldn't have and known. She wouldn't have come to accept it. Like That's the lens I was viewing it through obviously she could have said yes i'm curious or whatever but But she she wasn't she wouldn't have so like that's how i was viewing it throughout the book um i think that's why it's so important that it was dual pov yeah because if we only had her perspective i think it would have been a lot Mm -hmm. more like oh he's pressuring her he's so aggressive he's so whatever but being mm-hmm. able to also know like it feels safe because we know that's not his intention he's able to like yeah. recognize that she is so repressed that she's not able to acknowledge that she wants it mm-hmm. yeah i think it's a fascinating conversation to have and i think it fits pretty well into the whole like dubcon mm-hmm. like you know genre and i mean this was written in 99 i looked but I think it it worked for me. I think he stayed away after that until she – then it had to be her telling him that she wanted – what she wanted. Well, he he even made that a, an explicit Yeah, thing. it was the rule. And then she was, like, angry about it. She's like, I want him to do these things, but I don't want to have to say it. And then all those things happen. I will say, out of the balls to the wall, him – her crying on his shoulder and then him, like, licking his hand. Hey, I salute that man. That was so funny. I think I just put, like, three skull emojis. He was, was like, so horny. That is, like, the horniest man. That's actually the horniest thing I've ever read. Like, that man is so down bad. He was, like... That he was no, sniffing her fluids on his fingers <laughs> while she was sobbing on his shoulder. Just licking them off the yeah. palm of his hand. Yeah. No, that man is so sick for that. <sighs> so that took me out. Sickening. Um, in the it was way. sickening, truly. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think. You love to see it. <laughs> I sure did. It, it definitely like made me think like that first scene. Um, and I was curious to read some of their reviews and see how, you know, 
people were reacting to it. Well, and then it um, gets more complicated with the mm-hmm. next one, which we'll get to. Um, mm-hmm. But I think POV is also really important in that one. We'll get there. Mm-hmm. Not to jump ahead, because there's so many so, things yeah. that happen in between. Yeah, so, like, in my mind, I think either way, like, if you're just not comfortable with, like, any of that, I think that's totally valid, but I... I think there's a difference between not being comfortable with it. Like, it wasn't yeah. comfortable, but that doesn't mean yeah. that it's... Bad. I just don't think romance has to be 100% morally sound to be yeah. compelling. And so even though I'm like, that wasn't cool of you to do, Mick, that mm-hmm. was like a not okay thing, you can also acknowledge the way that it moves Winnie's character mm-hmm. progression forward mm-hmm. and their relationship arc. Yeah. In a way that quite literally would never she happen have, if yeah. Winnie was left to her own devices because mm-hmm. she was so buried in that fear and shame. Mm-hmm. Like and she, she had never needed him to push her out of it. Yeah, she had never like she had no knowledge of what anything was. Well, no, because they have that whole yeah whole scene where she's like, "I've seen little cherub statues. <laughs> that can't be right." That's another lesson. Statues lie. Statues <laughs> lie. <laughs> they do be lying. There's. I definitely have a note. Okay, hang on. We're gonna come back to this conversation about her not knowing what a penis looks like because Widge! Widge. Um I also love that he later on explains the difference. Cause I didn't at no point was I like, I I've never heard of a widge. What are we talking about? Yeah. And he was like, no, no. It's only a widge before. <laughs> and then, and then I thought that was like, funny Hot. too. I thought that was funny too, because widge was just a funny word. I was like, huh, that's funny. Oh. And then <laughs> Because then she liked the way – yeah, okay, we'll get to it. Yes. That scene was also um, great. My next note is um, a note about how naturally refined he is in some things. Mm-hmm. Like, he's so naturally stylish, naturally, like, words, mm-hmm. but specifically there's the part where he, like, really, really likes that hat. And what he puts yeah. it on, he puts it on at an angle. So and dapper. And she's like, oh – oh or like he'll hand her out of the carriage mm-hmm. really well or whatever it is but mm-hmm. then and, also like is and that's also rakish. yeah and even on those same lines when she first saw him she understood that he could like mimic mm-hmm. like the wordplay and like accents and stuff and so she was like fascinated by that um whereas like no one else saw him and his abilities like that well and then um, even the progression like she saw how how much he loved words and then reading and even she later on was like i underestimated just how Mm -hmm. smart he is and then even at one point she says he's not just smart he's brilliant like he's smarter than i am Mm -hmm. which again i just feel like the ending kind of undermines this whole like challenging the idea that someone of a lower class could be yeah, to me, I still liked it. I liked it for the story. I don't. I didn't really have anything wrong with it. I actually really enjoyed it. It didn't go where I thought it was going to go, so I was like, oh, that's fun. I don't mind it as just like a fun little rags to riches ending, mm-hmm. but I feel like it would have been more compelling as a, not a moral, but like an exploration of this idea that the the prejudice of like a more refined accent mm-hmm. and a better educated person is not inherently smarter or better yeah. than somebody of a lower class and i mean you can still argue like he was raised as a lower class person mm-hmm. but then it still kinds of it gets into that like oh well blood blood will out right like he's smart but it's because he's an aristocrat and it's like i wanted him to just be a rat catcher who was really brilliant but yeah. it's fine I do like that we got the happy ending out of it and she got her, like, ancestral home back and everything. And she had already accepted his proposal. And that's that true. they And that they had both, like, gotten over their bridges and were going – like, I had all faith that if he wouldn't have been a duke, they still yeah. would have gotten married. They still would have had a happily ever after. He could have been the valet or, like, if they stayed in London, whatever. Um and so I at least, I appreciated that because sometimes when you have that like magic fix, um, that's when right. they propose and that's when they're like, oh, now you can do all this. Right. So like I I enjoyed it just because I was like, okay, then 
like he can like provide for his like family and like he have an easier life and everything. But yeah, I I think either way would have been fine for me. I was intrigued as to what those two twins were doing because like I didn't know what their game was going to be because obviously there was like something happening and I was like I don't know how this is like fitting in to like what else has happened. Yeah. And then also whenever a Lindbergh baby esque situation happens in a book, I I do eat it up every time. It's only <laughs> happened in three books, but all three times. Lindbergh baby. <laughs> I have I have enjoyed it. It happens in the Found series by Margaret Peterson Haddix, which is like a middle grade foundational, dare I say, in my reading journey. Um, in the Truly Devious series and uh this one. So I have three nickels, and that's 15 cents. I wish we could have gotten a little bit more of, like, to be clear, I gave this book four stars. Like, the ending Mm -hmm. was the only thing that really kind of bugged me, and it was only enough to knock it off, like, one star. And that's funny, because that bumped it up a star for me. Because I was, like, well, because I I gave it, like, four and a half. So I was, like, either way, like, it could be four, it could be five. Because I found, like, some of the stuff in the middle, I think I was just, like, tired and, like, because I didn't listen to the audiobook, and so it was, like, a pretty, like, chunky, like, book, and so I was, like, kind of not wanting my eyes to focus, but it wasn't what I was reading. It was just that I had to be reading <laughs> because, like, what I was reading was good information, and, like, uh, I thought all of it was good. The curse of assigned reading. <laughs> that, the minute I have well, to read something, I'm like, ugh. Even though I'm the one who made myself read it. Well, it's funny because, like, I, it lost me just a smidge there, but then I was up to, like, 5 a.m. reading it. One, because I had to finish it because I had to work, so I didn't have time to read it, so I needed to finish it before we recorded. But also, I just didn't want to stop, so, like, that bumped it up because I was, like, compelled, especially through the third act because I just did not know how it was going to go. And then you kind of, like, you're, like, was he – was he not the grandson? Like, was he – um do I, like, I, I, uh, I mean, they didn't really redeem the grandfather person, cousin thing, great grandfather. Uh, my One of my next notes, not quite the next one, but one of the next one is um, Xavier, it's on site. Yeah. Uh, and also a note on how uh, historical romance is one of the subgenres best equipped to look at the effect of patriarchy on women's lives to paraphrase something that I've talked about with Sanj quite a bit. And I'm sure she's posted on social media mm-hmm. um, that really shapes the way I read a lot of historical romance. And I do think that this one is a really good example of that. We're like, yes, she's an upper class lady. Yes. She's very privileged in X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. However, um, there's really no protection once her parents are out of the way for this mm-hmm. elderly relative who has inherited literally everything that should have gone to her to be like, fuck you. Mm-hmm. There's like that little bit where the law steps in and is like, okay, you can't use her dowry. Like you've got to give yeah. her some money. And he's like, okay, here, have this random house. Um, mm-hmm. But like even the most privileged of women are still kind of like <laughs> yeah, At the whims. Of this mm-hmm. random man who doesn't even like you for no reason. Oh, Xavier, it's on site. No, he didn't redeem himself. No. And I'm glad. I mean, they had the one, like, mutual nod thing happen. Whatever. But I'm, I know, but I'm glad, like, it wasn't. Like, there was no, like, hugs or, like, turnabout. No. Where he was. No, no. I mean, he was a bitch till the end. He really was. He did commit to that. He and then like, he died. Okay, fine. So. I guess you're my grandson. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Was I sad that Freddie also died? Yes. He didn't deserve Freddie. No. I do think it was sweet the way she like curled I up know. on him, but he didn't. Deserve but then also, I was like, "How about you stay alive and just leave with Freddie?" Was already really old. I know, but I was like, maybe there's like a part. No. There wasn't. There Freddie was, was no gonna part. die for sure. Freddie I just was thought. Like that for- ancient ferret i was just like holding on to the hope that she was just depressed that magic went away and i was like i would be too because i am but no but she at least got to eat well she did it was like oh 
Mm -hmm. a really elderly ferret is going to pass on peacefully after eating her body weight in like caviar and goose liver liver. (laughs) love that for her okay we have to back up because we've skipped to the end Uh uh-oh and i have more notes from the in-between multiple of these notes are just about things that made me cry one of which was him laying on the floor while she read to him with his hat that he loves so much on his face until he falls asleep again i guess i mean i've said this i think in the past few it's just good writing when it's that cinematic because like you could just see i literally have the note that this whole book feels cinematic yeah like all of it is just like you can see it all happening you can see him on the ground looking at the light like you just know and i like i think it just is a really good writer when that happens because i'm obviously like you read or some I don't know what happens in other people's heads. Like, I don't see things in my head, but, like, I know what, you know. But it was just so well described without being flowery or, Yeah, like, I didn't even notice her verbose. describing things. It was just so well done. Right. Like, it, it all just kind of blended yeah. into it. It wasn't, like... And it created the scene so well. Yeah. No, the entire time, mm-hmm. I have multiple times where I was, like, this, I can see it. This is very sin like it would make a really good movie which is not a lot of romances and i think about that with really well-paced books Mm. because like there are some where you're like this would make a good movie but not a book because a movie you watch for an hour and a half but a book you have to be in it for like you know six to eight hours or whatever Mm -hmm. um but this is one where i would like i want to see everything Mm -hmm. on the screen well and she managed to Something I'm really picky about is, like, books that take place over a a period of time where, because it's such a long period of time and you don't get to see every interaction, it feels sometimes like you're skipping milestones where it's like, Mm -hmm. I didn't get to see their relationship evolve. You're just telling me that in the past Mm -hmm. X number of weeks, like, and now they've talked and they've fallen in love. And I'm like, but that's the part that I wanted to see. I think Mm -hmm. she did a really good job of showing us enough milestones where, like, here is this conversation. And even if it's not a... I mean, everything obviously moves the relationship arc Mm -hmm. along, but even if it's not a, like, huge moment between them, it's like, oh, and then they had this nice, lovely little conversation, and she told Mm -hmm. him about her childhood, and – or even there's a scene where – I think it's after they go out dancing where she's just, like, continuing to talk to him, and he's not even paying attention to what she's saying most of the time, but he's Mm -hmm. just so, like, enamored and, like, wants her to keep talking. Mm. (sighs) Yeah, I haven't gotten to that. They're in yeah, the town scene. We'll come back. Um, yeah, I one of my notes was like the ro- it, the romance was spread out. It like mm-hmm. it took the entire book to feel them falling in love. Like you felt them falling in love throughout the entire yeah. book. Like nothing felt like it shouldn't be there. Like, mm-hmm. and uh, again, like I was kind of like tired, <laughs> but I don't think that was the book's fault. That was just me being tired um and so again like I think any of those issues I have would be resolved with the audiobook and like knowing everything um because I couldn't be angry at it because I'm like okay well everything that I read was needed like I needed to know everything and also I wouldn't have wanted their relationship to start any sooner Mm -hmm. than it did I'm impatient yes but like no I wouldn't have bought yes it like it would have felt too easy you know where the end felt a little easy which i agree it was easy i think the relationship no but i don't think the part of the ending that i disliked was just the like thematic yeah undermining but i don't think that it hurt their relationship in any way no not at all because they had they're already solidified yeah it's exactly like what you said they Mm -hmm. she would have married him anyway yeah and was going to that was the plan Mm -hmm. she agreed and he and i was i was i was excited to see how they were gonna finesse their situation but then i mean i think it would have been exactly they would have gone and he would have been a valid and i was just excited to see that little slice of life of them just like being cute because you don't see you don't see a lot of like two i mean she's not working class but i mean she was technically kind of working um you just don't see a lot of like two working class like couples Mm. or whatever i mean again she's not but where they're both just kind of like living within their means and one doesn't have like a huge windfall and there's no like right. all of that. Um, but 
I'm ha- I'm also happy that it didn't go into like I can't marry you because I'm just a rat catcher. Like yeah, that would have been long. like annoying. It I mean, have. it did feel like a very natural slow mm-hmm. burn in that like mm-hmm. I mean, like you said, you wouldn't have wanted it to move any faster. Like there were some things that happened early, like sexual tension was a little bit faster yeah. burning, but even so, it, it mm-hmm. really went at its own pace. I was gonna. This is only tangentially related to what you were talking about, but it made me think of um the like seeing what their life would have looked like afterward Mm -hmm. and i do think she did something that i've noticed other writers do and but only sometimes Mm -hmm. and i really like it when they do which is include enough like even if you don't have a super long epilogue you can imagine very specifically what their life is going to be like after the end of the book because they've included enough of it in the prep like so him falling asleep with her reading and, like, asking mm-hmm. all the questions and doing all of this. Or, like, him dancing in the kitchen with the cook. Um, and then, mm-hmm. like, the dancing lessons where they just, for hours and hours, were dancing around and he would be the one, like, humming the music. And there were enough mm-hmm. of mo- the moments like that where I was like, that's how they're going to be. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't happen in every book, but I really like it when it does because then it doesn't feel like you get shorted when they don't admit that they're in love until the very end. And then you're like, okay, but what now? I didn't get to see mm-hmm. them happy. Like you got to see what they looked like happy together mm-hmm. throughout the entire book. And That's it was so point. charming. Like he's laying on the floor with his hat that he's obsessed with on his face. I'm fine. There's Stacy Reed. Um the wick her wicked marquess i think um a lot of the book is just him sneaking into her room and them like playing like chess or like checker like just games like because she's like pleading a headache every night so she's not going to balls and he's just like sneaking in her room and just like talking to her and having conversations and i loved it like people are like they didn't do anything and i'm like they didn't have to like you just it was just such a lovely time to just see them fall in love. So sometimes when I do love a good angsty time and like external stuff, I do also just love when they're like in the same room, just doing the thing. I'm much more picky about a book that doesn't also have either it's I like emotional turmoil mm-hmm. or it also has an external plot. I mean, that one Usually also had a have whack both. external plot too. <laughs> sure. Um <laughs> But yeah, I'm usually much more pi- like I prefer a bit of emotional angst to mm-hmm. that, but I think it's only because it's so hard to write yeah. well. Because I really mm-hmm. do love like a well re- like the Duke who didn't by Courtney Milan is my go to of like Ugh. there's a little bit of an external plot, but yeah, ninety percent of this book is just it's like it takes place over the course of two days, mm-hmm. so you really do spend nutty. the entirety of those two days with just like Jeremy following her around trying to talk her into realizing that mm-hmm. he's in love with her we need to do that as an episode maybe we should Ugh. do that for next week oh i cannot reread it by next week you could though no i could not i what genuinely are we doing could for not week? we haven't gotten there yet don't worry about <laughs> it we'll we'll get there okay <laughs> relax <laughs> back to my notes my next one is the quote, did a widge wear a mustache? I highlighted that one too. Because that is one yep. of the funniest sentences in that book. She's like, is there hair? Did, did a, a widge wear, wear a mustache? <laughs> and that was also cinematic. Because I sure did picture a little penis with a little mustache. <laughs> did a widge wear a mustache? That is... That's the to be or not to be of the modern era. <laughs> Did a witch wear a mustache? I mean, the ultimate philosophical question. She did get the answer later. Um, mm-hmm. God, what a charming... I mean, I do love a dual POV where, like, each POV... Like, you can tell the difference in the writing style. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not first person, but like you can tell the different ways that they think. He had so much more. Oh yeah, yeah, like it conversation. Was colorful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And hers was like you could feel her spiraling a lot of the time, mm-hmm. um, and that was one of the things. But like that was just such a a, a winny specific way to conceptualize. Instead of being like, does he also have hair? It's did a widge wear a mustache? So specific. Oh, 
It's also like a very pleasing sentence. Yeah. The structure of it. Did a witch wear a mustache? <laughs> it it sounds like a like a nursery rhyme or something. <laughs> it's the it to be like not give to a be. mouse a cookie. <laughs> yeah. Did a but, witch wear a mustache? We gotta stop. If you if you this. give a witch a mustache, he's gonna want a hat. <laughs> and if you give him a hat, stop. He's gonna want a cane. Enough. Enough. Um. <laughs> the witch wears a mustache, but uh, Mick does not. The lesson is if you give a widget a mustache. No, it's not. I have a lesson <laughs> that isn't related to widgets. Or <laughs> incest. Directly. Or incest. We'll get there. That's impressive. Yeah. Well, just like the widget. Let's see. My next note is just OMG the elderly ferret. Um, it just oh, made me emotional Freddy. that he was like, I love Freddie so much and I'm going to take care of her and called her little And prof. that he was such... Like, he just brought it to the ball. Yeah, and my, was just my like ovaries. Bring they sure did do a little jig. They were microwaved. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> he was like, "Not tonight, duck." And I was like, "Oh, oh not tonight, duck." Oh, Mick, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that to me? What the hell? Talk to what, do you, what do you mean? What, what, what do you what mean? Do you mean? <laughs> no, but, but what do you mean? Yeah, no, I am Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> I mean, that was me in that scene. That was also me in the scene where he was like, no, I sold all of my animals to buy you a dress. And I was like, Shut That up. made me slightly angry. Shut I was up. like, Magic, get your butt back here right now. But then I was like, but Magic has a girlfriend and he's with the girlfriend. Yes. It were a lot of conflicting feelings Definitely in my body. Girlfriend. I think he made a valid point where he was like, I was gonna, like, he didn't sell them to buy the dress. Yeah, yeah. And it was very much out of a place of like, they weren't getting the exercise yeah. they needed. They weren't getting to do the things mm-hmm. that they were bred to do. So, like, And he sold it to someone he trusts who right. had the dog that magic loved. Like, I understood it. Right. My heart was a little sad. Sure. But my brain was sure. like, okay, yeah, I get it. And they got the puppy. So, like, it's it all worked out. worked out. I'm so happy that they brought the magic back up because so many times an author will, like, reference something. And then they just won't talk. Because I was, like, at, at the point where she was, like, where the fuck is this dog? I was also, like, where is this dog? I was, like, mm-hmm. like they haven't, like, the animal, like, what, that's weird. And I was, like, it was all intentional, mm-hmm. which made me smile. So I was really happy that we got to see Freddy. Or, no, rip Freddy. Rest in peace, angel. Um, <laughs> I was you little really angel ferret, you. <laughs> I was just happy that we got to see magic at the end and they got to be reunited and that it was all. It's true. All good. Um, Okay, this I feel like we could discuss. I have a note about the moment where, I think it's where she walks in on him reading uh, and finds that he's been doing what my dad always told me to do and which I never did writing down words you don't know Mm. and then looking them up and then going back to read them in context so he could learn the new words and that's specifically Mm -hmm. the moment where she has the thought of like he's not just smart he's brilliant and he's smarter than me um and I had a lot of feelings about it because my favorite like um I don't know how to explain this but I love banter and romance novels Mm -hmm. because I think that that's one of the best ways to show that two characters are intellectually on the same wavelength is to have Mm -hmm. them like have a natural sense of banter that they don't have with the people around them and so I think having them even though they're so different and like there are all these things they don't have in common they're from two very completely different worlds but to have them on the same wavelength intellectually where she's Mm -hmm. like not only is he smart he's actually smarter than me and has all of this like love of language i just it was like kind of genius to me to have it be Mm -hmm. like not just lust they're not just like physically attracted to each other there is Mm -hmm. an intellectual connection where no one else in this book is on the same level as these two people well and that's what the middle of the book did yes because you had because you had the the beginning with her breaking down and crying and like they like there was that very lust filled scene Mm -hmm. and then the entire middle of the book 
was them just getting on the same page and like the same like wavelengths right and because like, it was like a, a language barrier initially mm-hmm. essentially where she could not see past the accent well she mm-hmm. did a little bit but not to the extent that she mm-hmm. needed to and i think he couldn't p- see past the lust necessarily like he knew how yeah. smart she was but he wasn't thinking in terms of like oh this is someone that i would like to talk to all the time mm-hmm and she like she explicitly like said something about the accent i can't remember i think she like explicitly like says what you were just saying but like in the book but i can't remember what it was yeah, I mean, she has multiple times where she has to mm-hmm. reevaluate what she initially thought about him yeah. and be like, oh, I am prejudiced, even though she is less prejudiced than everyone else in terms of, mm-hmm. like, she can understand his accent. It was – part of that was um, when she had to make him move downstairs. Oof, that was rough. That hurt, that hurt a lot of my body. That shit hurted. It hurted. Oh, it hurted. And I was just like, but what if you – don't tell him to move because this is sad and then the way she said when she said it the way and then uh, and just knowing how like excited he was about i know big lovely room and he takes the one the farthest away and he was just showing he was like i'm gonna show her how good of a rat catcher i am and she was like oh shit there's like like, he's a businessman. He keeps these ledgers. Like, it's all this strategy. Like, there, there's yeah. so much more to this than I had given him credit for. He's not just a rat catcher. Like, mm-hmm. this is a profession. And then was like, also moved downstairs. Oh. And then he was just like, what? And then, because uh, it just had so many implications. The implications. The, imp- <laughs> the implications, the implications implicated. Like that was a Team Star Kid reference. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, I am not your anybody. I know, I know you don't. But <laughs> if anyone did recognize it, hello to you, anybody. There, because like you had the, like the fact that she's like not recognizing him as like a man, and that the, everyone was like seeing that happen, and then they were like, it's not proper. But then also like his class diff- like the class differences like in his head and like how like women of the upper class would like saw him and I was like oh my god it hurt I really do enjoy there's a um I think it's oh it's a Sarah McLean it's when a Scott ties the knot and he I mean he inherits he's I don't know if he's a duke or an earl or what um but it's the it's a um oh my god ward mm. ward like guardian romance i mean he doesn't know her and they're very close in age and he's like the 20th duke or whatever it is to mm-hmm. inherit this ward or something um but part of his emotional baggage is the fact that he also is a uh, mix what does he say yearning for the mud he has that uh yeah experience of women essentially being like oh this big hot scottish brute like throw Mm -hmm. me around sleep with me but then are very disdainful about it and like look down on him and he like (laughs) really ingrained that into his self-perception and so that's a big part of his emotional arc is recognizing that he's not like essentially a slab of meat that women Mm -hmm. just want to get dirty with and is actually like deserving of love and respect and Mm -hmm. i eat it up every time i mm, yeah. love a lower class man who has been treated like garbage having to reckon with that and figure out that he deserves to have like some level of self esteem mhm mm, i yeah, love cuz my cuz my downfall with the class difference a lot of times is when they never get that self esteem until like mm. the last chapter and the entire thing is like i don't deserve you you deserve this person you deserve right. this i i will never so like that's why i love um like a week to be wicked by tessa dare it's not class difference per se but when he was like i don't deserve you but i'm going to try like whenever that kind of conversation isn't like happens or like what you've talked about when the villains just like know they're doing something wrong and they just not the mm. villains, but like the antihero, like Nash knows he's doing it wrong, Vincent. but but he just takes her anyway and like deals with the consequences later. There is something so mm. uh erotic about Sebastian St. Vincent being like, I would kill her before I let you have her. 
Mm hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> it awakened something guttural in me as we just witnessed. Because that's it unhinged. Yeah. That's like not like, okay. And I, oh. So, like, those are like two different sides of the same coin where I just love when people recognize that mm-hmm. they may, that they don't deserve someone, but they're not going to run from it. Mm-hmm. They're going to try, or they're just going to steal her. Or they're or just, just going like, to, they're going to work through it. Like, I can't remember if it was, if it was like the Stacey, I don't know. It happened recently in a book and I was like, fuck yeah. Um, I just love whenever it happens because I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop of them to be like, no, you, I'm going to leave and this is going to happen. Um, I love it. And it has to be, and it has to be done really well. Yeah. Because it, because that, it leads into the less of a fight and more of just a conversation third act rather than like a breakup. Um, because there's no like third act breakup in a week to be or, wicked. Like, I mean, it, like, like um, external stuff. Lord of Scoundrels, where you have yeah. like it's not a breakup mm-hmm. exactly. I mean, they do have the whole like where she's pretending mm-hmm. to be the perfect wife, and that's like a and it's fight, delicious kind of, but it's and so it's good delicious. that it doesn't feel like a breakup. Yeah. Um. Well, that's how Private Arrangements by Sherry Thomas. I hope that one wins in your book club. That <laughs> I mean, was I'm a- gonna read it regardless. That was a wild book. It's Sherry Thomas, uh, so that doesn't surprise and me. And I was like, hello. It was good. And because, like, just the way it all concludes was really fun. Um, and this one doesn't even have, like, a like a breakup. No. The, well, because the third act is. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought they were heading for the breakup after the night out. Which yeah. We will, actually, my next note is. The, yeah. Number one, the dancing scene is one of the most cinematic parts. And also, I was like, I actually fully... I thought it was going to stop. I'm I not feared. being dramatic. I actually was fully crying. And not just in like, oh, I'm crying. Like, it actually did make me cry real tears um, mm-hmm. when she started dancing. Mm-hmm. And was, like, experiencing that, like, oh, I can't... Like, very slowly getting into it. Mm-hmm. And I fully actually wept. Like, it was a visceral scene. It... Oh, oh the feelings. Uh... I mean, like, mm-hmm. joyful, but I was actually crying. I was like, wow, this is so much for her. Yeah. Oh, the feelings that I felt. Where and, was I going with that? Where, why well, because it was the breakup. Like, um, oh. Because I thought that they were – well, I don't even know if I thought I was going to a – I guess I kind of thought I was going to, like, the class difference. Like, I don't – like, he was going to internalize, which he kind of did, but it – Worked well, it out. I think that was where, like, you thought yeah, it was going to that be that other a guy. And then she, yeah. well, after when he, like, dropped her off and he was like, okay, good night, yep. like, I'm done. Yep. But then she showed up and was like, The sexiest no. thing ever is she closing said, a door and someone being on the other side. I would like to see mm-hmm. the widge. <laughs> and the way like she said it, and then he's like, what? She's like, you said that to me. He's like, oh, my God. Yeah, he was like, where did you learn that? And she was like, <laughs> you. I don't. That <laughs> uh, took me out. So, like, I love when it can subvert it. So, I think when, like, you know, obviously it's it's a thing to be like, this book doesn't have a third act breakup or it's, like, low angst. But there's a way to do it where, like, it's good. There's also a way to do it where it's boring and nothing happens. And, and that – because, like, a breakup should show something, like, a hurdle that the couple has to resolve. Yeah. And that, like, it fundamentally fixes something mm-hmm. that was wrong. I've read and breakups so where I was like, that needed to happen. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I've been rooting for the breakup sometimes because you need to see – because, like, some, like, sure. people – like, some characters will just not believe they're wrong until – because, like, there there was a author conversation with, like, Sophie Jordan, I think, Megan Frampton, maybe. I don't know. Um, but they're talking about, like, the thing to happen is the character's worst fear. Like, that's where the third act should go. Um and so – and I think about that a lot. Um, so you can kind of, like, sometimes see where the third act's going to go when mm-hmm. you kind of, like, evaluate their fears and, like, okay, you know. Right. Um, but within that, for the, like, cold – like, if there's, like, a cold, distant character, it's probably going to be them finally falling in love and, like, expressing their emotions that is not reciprocated. Fi- like, because, like, they haven't been reciprocating the entire book. And then when they shift it – it's gonna not like the other person's gonna be like walking away sure like it took just like one chapter too long for them to um admit things and then their worst fear whatever um it's like opening up and then 
losing it. Um, so I was scared, but it all worked out. And it just worked out in a really good way. Well, I think it was structured really well in that Mm -hmm. so you have the setup of like she is not willing to ask for it and part of that comes from the idea that she thinks like if I was pretty enough I wouldn't have to ask but also just straight up like the fear of it because she's Mm -hmm. so afraid of everything and him meanwhile needing to be asked because of his whole yearning for mud thing Mm -hmm. um so you have that entire thing set up fairly early on where he's like you need to ask me for what you want Mm -hmm. only to then not follow through with it initially yeah because he's like all right fine i can't like we're gonna make out on this bus now because i know that you want Mm -hmm. me to kiss you but you're not gonna say it whatever fine and then she manages to finally actually ask for what she Mm wants, and in doing so stops what could have been a yeah a third act breakup that i think another author may have gone with of like oh that's it they fight and then Mm -hmm. they have to go to the ball but now they're fight whatever yeah and instead that is the point at which Winnie finally does ask for what she wants, which has mm-hmm. been what he needed her to do from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. So, like, it was set up that way the entire time so that we could subvert where you thought it was going and instead just be like, there's a ferret loose at a ball and they've yeah. been <laughs> bamboozled by these twins. <laughs> It just, it just, it just had all the tension of two people being on the opposite sides of a door, like the like a bedroom, like the husband's bedroom and then the wife's bedroom, and then mm-hmm. like one will go up, almost open, go back, be like, no, the you other one, you don't, snow, man, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a hundred degrees. Um, I do want to build a snowman. I do <laughs> because it's a hundred degrees. I want to be a snowman. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I would like to be a snowman. Um, roll me up and give me a carrot nose oh my god i don't know i don't know that's, what that was that's the new paint me like <laughs> roll me up and give me a carrot nose that's the new shave me down make me round actually <laughs> um and then the moment when the person finally like opens the door and it's like big dramatic and then the other person's right there mm-hmm. god i love it and I felt like that also happened where he finally goes to his room and then she shows up. It's just so romantic. Well, it's like you were saying a third act breakup is always like they took one chapter too long to do mm-hmm. the thing that would have prevented it. And this yeah. is the opposite of that. Mm-hmm. Where it's it's the chapter before a breakup would have happened. She prevented yeah. it. By and it's still – sh- and they're still overcoming something and it's still mm-hmm. like leading – to their HEA like it's not like obviously breakups can get annoying when they don't do anything when it's pointless when nothing is learned when no one either growls or things just don't Mm -hmm. happen but that's it can also be like that for these and so you needed like this was just as much tension as a breakup Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know like it functioned the same way um I agree it was incredibly well structured yeah I feel the same the way about the sex book. scenes, or like yeah. there weren't an overwhelming amount of them. The ones that there, I were would have liked written. one more. I don't think it needed. What we one got more. was really good. I mean, it, did, it didn't. I just because... liked it. <laughs> well, but I, I, I like. Think... I really liked how she wrote them. Well, so I, I was. Think all of them were doing something, something. really important, mm-hmm. and it was not a just frivolous like... book. Like nothing about it was like no, it was frivolous. All very intentional, even though it was yeah. all very funny. Not all, yeah. but you know. Okay, hang on, yeah. because speaking of sex scenes, we're talking about the dancing scene, at which I yes. wept, and Winnie went under or underwent a lot of character development. Mm-hmm. And then we have a sex scene that made me lose my mind, and I was kind of nervous about it, because I had read some reviews going in that were like, the first time they do anything, th- she's drunk. Not true. She had had, like, a glass of ale. She was just living on life like Larry. Yeah. She wasn't... When he was living like Larry, she'd had a little bit to drink, sure, but like... Yeah. And even so, I think in old schools, we're, again, we're a little bit more comfortable with dubious consent than Mm -hmm. we are today, even though dubious consent can be doing something really interesting, even though morally we recognize that Mm -hmm. it is not okay, I say as I step onto my soapbox here. Because even if you argue, well, clearly she's had these glasses of ale and she's not in her right mind, I once again argue that the same with Mick kind of forcing her in the earlier scene, 
Winnie needed that in order to get up on the to stage release and dance. the inhibitions and feel the rain on her skin. She quite no one else could needed it. Her. Yeah, I- liquid courage. Yeah, I didn't have like I read the re- the reviews after too. Um, I hadn't read them before, so like I didn't have that going into it. Um, I had it going into it for it happened when autumn with Lisa Kleypas. Yeah, same. Because I because um I read the physical copy that hadn't been revised, and I didn't. I don't think I took fault with it. Well, because same thing. You're like, okay, that's not okay in mm-hmm. reality. You shouldn't sleep with someone mm-hmm. when they're drunk. However, can we recognize that in this fictional setting with these fictional characters, mm-hmm. the alcohol was like uh, the impetus. It was a way for mm-hmm. Lillian to let down her guard enough to mm-hmm. be able to connect with Marcus. Does that mean you should do it in real life? No, but I don't think that Judith Ivory was writing this book with the intention of teaching you how to be in a yeah. relationship because we're all adults yeah. and capable of understanding our own morals. Mm-hmm. Okay. Soapbox done. However, <laughs> the thing that I was obsessed with in this sex scene specifically is the POV switches. Because <laughs> I'm so excited about it. Judith Ivory has been head hopping throughout this book. But mm-hmm. most of the time, it was a much more like you would go through several scenes yep. in one character's head and then you would switch to somebody mm-hmm. else's. And sometimes it would happen kind of in the middle of a moment. But for the most part, it was mm-hmm. pretty easy to differentiate. This one went back and forth repeatedly. And at first, there was a we were leading up to it where Mick is having this whole like crisis where he's like, I want to fuck her so badly, but I can't do it in an alley. But what if I did? But I can't. But what if I did? <sighs> yeah. And I was like, this is so interesting because specifically in sex scenes but really in any scene but it's really important in those the kind of craft standard is you write from the perspective of the character who has the most to lose yeah so like in a sex scene the character who would have more need to consent is the one you should be writing from yeah yeah and at first i was like why are we in mick's head right now because Mm -hmm. he's you wouldn't normally like be in his head we need to be in her head to understand if she's okay with what's going on because he is like kind of pressuring her a little bit and i think Mm -hmm. that again when he needed that i don't think it was like a gross Mm -hmm. thing for him to be doing i think that he was on her wavelength and was like she's she needs me to be the one to push her or else she's never going to do the things that she already wants. and i think there was the precedent throughout the book of her being like i want this but i'm not going to say that i want it yes 100 percent. and again obviously this is all like based on the context and like within this book obviously yes and again, it's implications don't work everywhere. So we understand but, as the reader, yeah. yeah, what is going on. But so mm-hmm. we have this whole. I'm like, why are we in mixed head? Why are we in mixed head? Is he the one that needs to be consenting to this? And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, immediately after he makes the decision of like, okay, I'm not, I'm, okay, fine, I'm, I'm not gonna take her virginity, but I am gonna, I like, I have to mark her in some way. It immediately switches to Winnie's head, and I lost my mind a little bit. Because I was so, I was like, are we not going to get mm-hmm. her POV at all in this scene? And then we did. And boy, did we. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, did we. And Winnie was like, honestly, let's bang it out. <laughs> like. And then, and then it was already super hot and it was super like critical for Winnie's character. And then we get the most iconic line. Let's go rid you of your infertile virginity. I uh-huh. hate it. I want it gone. <laughs> Uh huh. And was that before they got in the carriage? Yeah, that was. Yeah, he's because, like, "I'm gonna take you home and make love to you all night long." And when he's yeah. like, "Hell yeah, giddy up," and he says, "And I go. said yeehaw," <laughs> and then we get yeehaw. in the carriage, and then they're like making out, and then he's like slowly pulling back, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I'm like, "Oh no!" I'm like, "Where is this going? Where is this going?" We get the uh, the confrontation where he yeah. puts on the gentleman accent and yeah. gives himself an identity. And he's like, "I am the Earl, uh, or the Viscount, or whatever." Yeah. Like. I have precedent over you, like power over you. And then the shit that that did to him. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. He incited his own identity crisis. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. He was 246. Oh, we're getting another Les Mis reference. Who am I? <laughs> I'm Jean Valjean. Except he's not. He's Mick Tremore. Mick Jagger. <laughs> he got the moves like Jagger. <laughs> And so oh. that had me panicking. Sure. So I was like, because I was like, before they got in the carriage, I was like, shit, 
he, this is gonna fuck him up. And mm-hmm. then they were kissing, and the carriage was like, yeah, it's not fucking him up. And then he's pulling back, and I'm like, oh my god, it's fucking him up. Which is fascinating <laughs> when you consider that he was the one who was like, I what know. if when we get in the carriage, she doesn't yeah. want it anymore? What if I get her home, yeah. she doesn't want it anymore? Maybe I should. Which is exactly what I was talking about with the person, like, for example, like, if they're the one who doesn't want to confess their emotions, and then they finally do, and then, mm-hmm. and so it, like, reversed it mm-hmm. back on its head of, like, now he doesn't want it, but she, like, she's been denying it, mm-hmm. and then when she finally wants it, he doesn't want it, or, like, he doesn't want, so, like, she, yeah, like, it just, I eat it up every time. It's just so good. Because mm. mm. then there's just, like, the tension of that, and then, like, what is she going to do about it? Yeah. Like, what, how is she going to handle this? Because if she had handled it in really any other way, yeah. it would have been I, – I think another yeah. author would have written they, it very different. I mean, obviously another author yeah. would have written it very differently. But I think perhaps a lesser author would have gone the mm-hmm. easier route of this incites the breakup mm-hmm. or whatever your equivalent is in a historical where they're not really – to get you yeah. know. God, I'm, I was just – it randomly made me think of when they lost Freddie at the ball and he was angry, but they didn't – Yeah, and she just was shit. like, I'm really sorry I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> And then they move forward. And I was like, wow. I was like, I love that. Um, as a side note, while we're talking about the sex scenes, um, mm-hmm. I have the note, what are the odds Allie Hazelwood read this? Because cause there's the scene where she's like, Yeah. He like deep throats her boobs are really little. And he, on multiple occasions, puts the entire thing in his mouth. And I yeah. was like, oh my God, Adam and Olive are cosplaying. Which I do find it. So I wasn't a fan of the love hypothesis. But I do think some of the criticism, like, I didn't have any problem with no. that in I the mean, book. I mean, it made and, me chuckle, but it wasn't mm-hmm. like, what is this? Um, but I do, I think he did it multiple times, actually. Yeah, he did. Multiple he made a point time. to call it out. He liked it. He put that whole thing like, in his mouth. And he was and like, like, I, I love a little mouthful. <laughs> and, like, I get it if that's just not your thing. Like, if you're like, I don't like that. Like, there are things that I, I just don't like. Um, that's just not one of them. I also, but I just don't think it's like, I mean, I don't love it. I'm not going to yeah. like go out of my way to be like, hoo mark this one, recommendation. He puts her whole titty in his mouth. But like, <laughs> it's not going to take me out. It, except that every time now I'm like, wow, this yeah. is so Ali <laughs> so wood-coated. Yeah. And then, and then also with the I burn from you from Bridgerton or like I burn for you. And then like I see it yeah. in like older books and newer books. And like it always just brings me back to that. It's just. Yeah. I'm like, well, Julia Quinn didn't invent that phrase. No. But now that Bridgerton has gotten a hold of it, mm-hmm. it is what we'll think of. Um, actually, my very next note is another reference that I was like, wow, this book, at least the end of it, this is so Anastasia coded. Grandmother, it's me, Anastasia. It was like, I feel like it was verbatim. Like, when did that movie come out? Oh, n- 93. I don't know. Four, five, two. 1997. One. It was seven? Two, it was two years I named so this. many numbers. Not that one. It God. came out two years before this book. How much money would we bet yeah. that Judith Ivory oh. watched Anastasia? Oh, I think she watched every available piece of media that deals with the. <laughs> well, because they referenced the Pygmalion in the book. Like the uh Winnie oh, yeah. calls it out. She goes she's to like reading to, to him. Is it George is it Bernard Shaw? Is it Shaw that wrote Pygmalion? Uh that's a great question for someone. It is in who fact knows George that. Bernard Shaw. So she went to go talk to George Bernard Shaw about Pygmalion. But I was she like did. I was literally like, this is so Anastasia coded. Mm-hmm. Like the mo, they were like your long lost grandson, and he was like, "No, get out of here, leave me alone. I'm just an old man." Again, so cinematic, so cinematic. Like I could just picture like a crusty, red eyed old man just like losing his mind because he doesn't want to confront. Also, the fact that, that they're his twins, grandson- like for some reason, it just Creepy. feels. But yeah. like, it just felt. There was just so many things happening. There were a lot of things that I could see it all happening. And like the portrait in the room at the same time, like. And again, I think it's just like her writing, which I we need to read more Judith Ivory. That's true. I've heard great things about several of hers, but especially Black Silk. 
Black Silk. Good to know. Um, I, I, I mean, I will say I felt like it came a little bit out of the blue, that whole ending. I wasn't mad about it, mm-hmm. but I was also like, wow. It just all of a sudden is like POV jump to the twins. To the brother. I think there could have been maybe before – because they they asked him about the color purple and the trains after yeah. we had that – after we had their POV. I think if it could have been woven in earlier – but mm-hmm. obviously, like, the structure of it, they needed to go and, like, find that information. But I think it could have worked where they found that information b- before and then, like, started to, like, weave things into that. Because it really was, for so much of the book, just a bet of, like, whether they can trick him into being a Viscount. Which was then confusing to me because I was like, but if he's a Viscount, but then they're saying that he was the long-lost Yeah, that I still dupes. don't fully understand their whole plan. And also, you have the counterfeit money randomly the, thrown that in just there. happened i do think to me the weakest part was them just kicking those two guys out because i was yeah. like what <laughs> we just got rid of them and we don't yeah. know what happened to them i was like i mean there was enough foreshadowing for like there's something suspicious going on that didn't bother me like there was something going on very early on it was a weird bet you have the I mean when I do you have the, the twins from the shining show up, you know, some <laughs> shit's gonna go down. I do think the counterfeit money was helpful as a like red herring kind of not it, even necessarily a red herring, but as a flag yeah. for like there's something uh, yeah. like here is concrete proof where Mick is like this is counterfeit money. Yeah. But like yeah, she can deny it, but you know, like, okay, so something really is going on. This isn't just him being paranoid like so that was good. That was helpful. And then you had the confirmation that like there were you know from her like former student that mm-hmm. somebody had been swindled but i i agree i think having them like either fishing for information or trying to plant weird specific where he's like why I do think i need plant- to i think planting the weird things would yeah have- i mean the mustache kind of but they also didn't push for the mustache to be gone no they as they hard as they could it. have because they made reference to being happy that it was gone right but, but that I think- also could just have been yeah they just didn't like the mustache yeah no, I, I agree. I think the the planting of information could have been sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it wasn't something like that, but just, like, yeah, family history or well, something cause that's that they would have already known. I was just so intrigued as to where the hell it was going. I was yes. like, what is this bet going to lead to? I was like, I don't understand. I don't know. Like, I've tried to. But well, look, I don't understand the ending <laughs> of this book and no. of what their end game was. No, Other than because to get the reward, but and the that that's the thing. Like they weren't they weren't like evil about it. Like they really were just like they they could just pass. But I'm like that's a big scamming. gamble, yeah. like a big risk. But I guess they weren't like if they just used the fake money, then they weren't out anything. I, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think like that was the we like the romance was so strong that I yeah. don't care enough to knock it more than a star like whatever yeah and that's why I, I didn't knock it a star because I had fun with it because sure. it was just so out of left field that I was like oh that's fun like this isn't where I thought it was going like I love a good <laughs> Lindbergh baby um <laughs> and so I just had a good time with it but I definitely was like. I actually thought it was, like, a little bit under – it was a bizarre ending to me because I both was, like, this is kind of out of left field. Even though I did a little bit in reading the reviews spoil part of the ending for myself. Mm. I didn't know exactly where it was going, but I knew he was going to be, like, the long lost Oh, you did? Oh, see, I I did not. I did know that, but I didn't know how he could possibly be connected. I was very much, like, he has a family. Like, he knows where he's from. Mm -hmm. What, how – so, like, the Lindbergh baby aspect was a surprise to me. Um it was a, just a very random, oh, yeah, wet nurse just even, kidnapped him. Even knowing, though, that he's somehow going to be the long-lost whatever, I was like, how – what is happening? Why is it happening? But even how bizarre it was, I was still kind of underwhelmed by the ending. It almost – like, it was, like, a little bit anticlimactic where I was like, oh, mm-hmm. and we're de- and he's dead? And he just accepted that he's the gr- – he just was yeah. like, and you can have all my stuff. And I was Which like – Which I oh. do think was also a turn on its head of, like, him being like, oh, if I accept this, it can do all of these things for me and, like, it can do this for my family. And, like, 
I didn't see enough of that from him. Mm. I actually would have liked to see more of him being like, I don't want it. And like having to kind of come to terms with. Come to that. I I guess I was just, it was 5 a.m. I was like. I mean, that's valid. <laughs> that's 100% valid for you to just be like, thank God we're wrapping it up. Yeah. I could have taken more chapters of this book because I just really enjoyed the story. Um, I can take it. Give me more. <laughs> take it all. I'm not going to say it. You know when you just deadpan dirty talk? <laughs> Give it to me. Oh, uh, uh, As a side note, uh, every time I think about dirty talk, I think about a very specific tweet exchange um, where somebody was like, what's your favorite thing to moan during sex? And <laughs> someone responded a combination of yes and deeper. And someone else responded, yeeper. <laughs> Yeeper? And um, that does come to mind in the same way that Allie Hazelwood comes to mind with the uh-huh. booby in the mouth. Um, <laughs> a booby in the mouth is worth two in the book. <laughs> That's the lesson. <laughs> a booby in the mouth is worth two in the book. Um, <laughs> I'm crying. Um, but, we actually are getting an insight into how she was last night. <laughs> Was dancing on the tables. Dancing on the tables. What do you mean? This is a great song, by the way. <laughs> it's by Austin something or other. I don't know his name. <laughs> um. Yeeper. Yeeper. How did we get here? I don't know. What were we talking about? I don't. Um... The ending. Anastasia coded. My next Anastasia note is I'm coded. fully about to weep over this little elderly ferret. Yeah, the ferret took me out. The ferret took me out. Um, I just the preciousness of him like sneaking him in the coat and like going on, and, like sneaking back out to feed her. I know. And then her curling up on the duke. And like wow. running away, like skirting. And then, because I was like, they're just gonna leave her. I was like, what's happening? I was like, what do you mean you're just going to leave her? She's old. What do you mean? I just. (sighs) Yeah. Like, I think. It could have been a four star read, but I think for me, it was the crescendo of how I like the emotions for me of like by the end. I was just like, oh, my God. There were a lot of feelings. It's very true. Yeah. There were a lot of feelings involved. And I love the epilogue. My last really kind of relevant note Mm -hmm. um because the next one is are they cousins question mark how are they related that's all my notes um (laughs) but the the next the or the final really truly relevant note was um if a man doesn't go wild when you agree to marry him what's even the point (gasps) of bringing back oh my god kissing while dancing thing no because because (laughs) actually that was the moment i was like this is five stars it was like i think before that i was like okay it's gonna be four stars and then he like Got an old lady. I was like, she, she like we're we're engaged. We're getting married. I was, and I was like, really, ah. really excited about it. That that actually, it and just the callback to the like you haven't danced until you've like danced yeah. with someone's mouth on your or like what, however it is that he says it. And I was like, that lit a fire in me so eternal. And it again is just that like you can totally see them doing this just like when mm -hmm. they're home hanging out and they're just like kissing and dancing and for him to do it then in front of just the earnestness. Say it again. Say it again. Of him just we're getting married because like you see like because you see it in the movies you see like she said yeah she said yes Mm -hmm. but just like this man just so happy and then just like oh. It gave me that the was the same moment I knew emotional response as you know the moment in a Disney movie at the end when the prince or here whoever the guy is um picks the princess up by the waist and twirls her around. Mm, it was mm-hmm. the same. It elicited the same or yells response. Ariel and clasps her head so gently to his shoulder. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so true. He clasps her head so gently. <laughs> And hugs I love her that. so tight. Oh, so tight. Prince Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why. 
Um, the phrase that immediately jumped into my head was something that I picked up from Tumblr many years ago and has never oh evacuated, God. and it was, uh, when will he penetrate my esophagus? <laughs> Mine is, um, I think it's a scene from Euphoria or something. It's, I've never wanted to suck a dick <laughs> oh, this bad in my life. Relatable. <laughs> that cracks me up. Um, Yes. Uh, the, fe- I had, I will say this for it. I had a lot of feelings. Good feelings. Oh, the feelings. Of that the feelings scene were specifically. Felt. Yeah. Of also many other scenes, as I have mentioned. Mm-hmm. But, oh man. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, and then the little, like, everybody needs a little magic. We talked about the whole, like, puppy mm-hmm. thing, but I did think that reveal was very cute. I'm just like, I'm you, she's coming down, and then he's like, oh. He's got a cute puppy, and then magic comes out and just jump in and happy and jumping like, oh five feet God. in the air as as magic does. It can you imagine you're looking at a little dog and it? I mean, I'm only five foot three, so that dog <laughs> would leap to all, like eye level with me. Stare off. I'm only five foot four. I so will I've say got... I have a visceral memory of one time. Uh, I don't know who it was that was here, but like some like work tradesman, mm-hmm. whatever. Like somebody he's working on something at the house, and they had. Uh, I think it was like some kind of pit bull breed or like, you know, mix. So, I mean, I love a good pit bull. Our, our dog is part pit bull and I love them very much. But their dog, and this was, I was a little bit shorter because I was much younger. So I was probably like 12 or something. Just a little bit. She was five foot two. I mean, I was probably <laughs> more like five foot, but whatever. I was, I was definitely at least a little bit yeah. shorter. This yeah. dog was just like happy to see me, but it immediately walked up to me and then proceeded to stand up and put its front uh, paws on my shoulders and yeah. just like look into my face, which no dog has Can ever done to me you before. Feel the love <laughs> but it was big enough that it was like the same height as yeah. me. Like it just propped yeah. its little legs up. Not little, it's a very large <laughs> legs up and just looked its shapely at me. legs. <laughs> it was a it's it, a was, nice it was a lot of dog lengthwise. Um, <laughs> lengthwise speaking. <sighs> but can you about It's just bouncing five feet in the air. I love magic. Mm. And also, I think we we also briefly touch on it. Just when, like, all the servants left because they were having sex all the time. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. They, just, they were like, we're going to go visit our family. You're annoying. I like that they were fully aware, too. Yeah, me, too. Just I thought like, that was unique, ugh. too. Like, that Milton wasn't, like, he's just, like, I just can't. Milton said, I cannot this be here is... for this. <laughs> They're, like, how huh, weird. The cook didn't show up either. I thought that was hilarious. I was just, like, uh... They were just fucking all over that house. <laughs> Honestly, good for them. It really was. It is what Winnie deserved. Mm-hmm. It was. She really... That awakened something in her. Mm-hmm. And I also just think a lot of times, like, I have the like a prejudice i don't know that i just assume like heroes in old school school books are gonna be like old school school books (laughs) i couldn't remember the term (laughs) that they're gonna be like very alpha and like dickish like asshole so like i love like when it's flipped Mm -hmm. or not flipped but like like you said, like in the For My Lady's Heart, um, yeah. this one, Indigo, even like, although I mean, I'm like sensing a theme and things that I like, obviously, but like, I just thought it was really fun. I mean, they're still um, not like just such soft, a good, like, cinnamon roll heroes. No, he's not, but he was just a good, right? Just felt like a good person. They're not, what is that? Ter- al- alf holes or whatever? It alpha is? hole, I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not, I mean, they're not even really like alpha. he didn't. He didn't punish her because he couldn't handle his emotions, you know. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I guess one time he wanted to cut her where it hurt. Um, yeah, but he immediately apologized. He said, "I take that back immediately. I did not mean it, <laughs> not even a little bit." He's like, "No, like I, I want you so I bad. Would... You got me saying things I don't mean." <laughs> yeah, and so like I just I, I was just pleasantly surprised that he was just such a lovely person. He was so charming. I know. Charming Mickey, if you will. That is true. I haven't read that book yet. I haven't either, but I need to. (laughs) I don't know how we got here. I would like to pose 
the lesson I learned from I'm this I'm so book, excited. Which isn't that funny. However, it is, if given the opportunity to stand on a table in front of a hot dude, take it. That's what I learned. Because she was standing on multiple tables. And it always turned out well for her. Yes. Maybe the lesson is just widges wear mustaches. <laughs> when you give a widget a mustache, it's going to want a hat. I still have not recovered from let's go rid you of your infernal virginity. I hate it. I want it gone. Mm. What a man, what a man, what a man. <laughs> <laughs> what an atmospheric book. And the thing like, that really gets me is sometimes authors get a little too into the setting and you're like, okay, mm-hmm. I get it. Like, I don't care anymore. Like, let's just focus yeah. on the action. At no point did I notice her describing things. Well, that's that's my favorite But I thing. somehow knew exactly where we were and what was and it, going on. Because I, I can't even think of a point where she would have, like, been – had superfluous buns. No, it was very – we said it earlier. Yeah. Everything was very yeah. intentional. Yeah. Any, I mean, it is long, but mm. I, I wouldn't cut it down. No, no. Again, like I think everything happened. It would be a detriment to the book if you were to cut anything that happened in the middle, because, I mean, she even just spent so much time with the dancing scene. Like mm. that was a lot of pages, and that was like a lot of that was a good amount of space. The dance to be season. given the the to night that, out, which was so was fun, many chapters long. Yeah, I, it needed to be, but uh-huh. I just I was like, oh wow, we're still and here, it, and it was a great tone shift from like other th- that we got into. It's like it happened at, like the perfect time, mm-hmm. and I always just love when a character gets drunk moment. Like I love it so much. Um, like when they like admit things or like just when that stuff happens. Um. Give me a sick scene or give me a drunk scene mm. and I will be happy. No, but you're um, right. It was perfectly timed because if yeah. you had spent that entire book in their house, it would be like, okay. Mm. Um, what a book. What a book. Stand on the tables. Take off your clothes. Can can. Bang the hot rat catcher. <laughs> so many lessons were said there. <laughs> There were a lot of directives. Um, yeah. What is this book if not a manual for how to live your life? That's so true. Uh, what else? Give your fancy garters to the lady with the long legs. Yeah. We didn't even talk about that. I mean, we did. Briefly. But we didn't But but we didn't even, like, talk about, like, how he was, like, getting chased out of the room because he was, like, the, like... Oh assistant like threw herself at him well, and like unbuttoning his shirt intro was just and then the inc- so unhinged and then i didn't know he had a ferret i thought he was like hoarding the mouse which i thought was cute but I then it was a ferret it was yeah that was a wild scene just like watching everything unfold because i was like i didn't i didn't know how we were getting to that bet i did not know what was gonna happen so started with a bang ended with a bang literally there's a bang in like the little bit of an epilogue where the very um, end did take me the fuck out yeah where he's like you gotta go stand against that wall and I'm <laughs> so gonna, that i can grow my I'm mustache gonna back. kiss the back of your legs for 10 minutes <laughs> for 10 minutes mick what are you gonna do for 10 minutes that's just kissing the back of her legs what's the back of the knee called i don't know does it I have a name is it not just the back know. of the knee i don't know but he wanted to investigate. That was his Watergate. He was really getting up in there. <laughs> he was. Getting all up in that knee pit. Slurp. Ew, what? <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I was just imagining him licking into it, you know? He's not like getting <laughs> in there. I'm sorry. That man slurp slurps <laughs> off the juices from his hand while she was sure did. on his shoulder. So I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility that he would lick the back of her knee licking he was that fucking sickening for that <laughs> foul so foul in a good way to be clear <laughs> when i say that he's sick for that in the same way that i am like mm. what a man we did not even talk about the fact that winnie is like a very unattractive heroine yes Ugh, we need yes. to wrap this up but i do love a Conven- un- unconventionally unconventional. attractive mm-hmm. heroin. 
especially just like hit his like cycle through it too oh my god yeah because he's into her right away mm-hmm. he said "Ooh, who is she you got an interesting face girl <laughs> it's all about she you said, girl shut up i'm ugly and your interesting face girl. <laughs> <laughs> not your interesting face girl <laughs> on um, your 30th birthday um, well, because then he was like, we, we're the same age, but he wasn't. He was like 32 or 33. He didn't know. He didn't know either. So I guess that was kind of like a clear, I don't know. He, it's all I don't about know. you, um, girl. But I, I also, it was asshole. just, it, it was so, so special to me. So lovely. The way. Did something so biblical to you? Yes. Um, The way that not only did we get like Mick this entire time, not just like lying and being like you're pretty, but being like you're more interesting then pretty mm-hmm. like a pretty face is not interesting your face is striking like i would like to mm-hmm. look at it and so eventually she does get to a point where she's like wow he's really into me and that like helps her but then mm-hmm. also to have that random guy yeah. along with all the other guys who were staring at her but like specifically to have the two guys fight over her mm-hmm. i just i needed that for her to not just be like oh yeah. you have that one person who will find you attractive i needed her to experience like oh my gosh someone else like it's not just mm-hmm. Mick. I I can be attractive, and the fact that mm-hmm. it was just when she was like confident and doing what she wanted to do, and then that random guy was like, "Hey, girl, what's up?" <laughs> but like with a British accent. You got any grapes? <laughs> bum bum bum. Um, mm, mm. that did something so special to my brain. I said yes. It, you just felt so good for her. Yeah. I really did, because she was a little bit prickly. She was so was. Such, she was such a fascinating heroine. Yeah, mm. I would have actually liked, I think, to peel away a little bit more of her backstory. It was yeah. never quite as trauma, like not that it wasn't traumatizing, but it was never quite yeah. as bad as I was expecting it to be. Where I was like, oh, so like her sometimes the ones terrible. Yeah, like you say sometimes the. Most dramatic backstories for me are the ones where the parents were so lovely and nice, and then they're just dead. Okay. Well. <laughs> My heartbreaker era. <laughs> fucking note in that fucking puzzle box. Ooh! Together. Um, I can't. I, I am button over it. Especially with her whole, like, the fixation on, like, the shame of wanting. I kept expecting there to be something where, like... Yeah, she had been courted, and then it was you know like a joke or yeah, on one side, and it never quite what. Not that what she went through wasn't traumatizing in its own way, right? Like mm-hmm. obviously, but I just I think I wanted to see a little bit more than just the very little glimpses we got of like, oh, her governess was mean to her. That was a really ran, not necessarily random, but just like randomly plopped. But it wasn't really explored more after that. Yeah. Other than just um, be like, this is why she is the way she is. But even yeah. then, I was like, at what point did she go from mm-hmm. the, like, empty well, tin was, thing? I mean, was the empty tin thing the turning point? or Yeah, because was it this book? I, I feel like I could be confusing it with another one. Was this the one where he said that his mother would say that the uh, that they were mm-hmm. going to be damned? Yeah. Or, like, going to hell, but, like, she would never, like, raise her hand at them or anything? Yeah. Well, and they also mentioned that when she was dying so horribly, she, like, confessed yeah. a bunch of stuff to him, but they never yeah. believed any of it. And I was like, oh, you know what would be so cool is if at the end we got the, like, oh, she confessed yeah. to, like, having stolen me and he never believed it because he thought it was just, like, her rambling. Uh-huh. And I expected that to be where it was going and then they never brought it up. And I was like, oh, huh. well, I assumed that that was in the rambling confessions, but either he didn't notice or I, I just wanted him to be like, oh, that explains. Yeah. That would have been smart. I, I mean, I assume that's the intent. Like, you're supposed to yeah. infer mm-hmm. that that is a part of that. His mom mm-hmm. is crazy. <laughs> that's what I took from it. I was like, oh, the Catholic is crazy? That tracks. I say as a Catholic, to be clear. I, I feel the need to clarify. I'm only ganging up on Catholics because I am one. <sighs> I'm not just like, and- fuck the Catholic. But it was kind of like, uh, why is the papist the one who, like, kidnapped the baby? Like, But okay, I think I started to talk about it, and I never, as we're wont to do, sure. finish the sentence, um, how she kidnapped him because the family was just so shitty. 
And they were like, yeah, they said she took him because, like, we just didn't deserve him. And, like, it was a shitty place to grow up. And I was like, I respect it. I mean, fair. <laughs> she said, I think not. Yeah, you, yeah. I also was dead at the explanation for, like, why he has so many siblings where he was, like, well, she's Catholic, yeah. like, so she just, like, <laughs> as many kids as his God will. Because I quite literally have known at least one family or like not known them personally necessarily but like have gone to church with families they're the lore with just like a bazillion children and you're like yeah first of all you have no control over your children they are running around in the middle of mass like what is happening right now and they're like well we mass just take hysteria as as god gives us and it's like yeah but you're fucking on the regular like this isn't god's will you're just horny i don't <laughs> look I'm not here to judge anybody's uh, form of birth control, whether that is family planning or something else. However, it was so specific. I was like, Judith Ivory, you either are a Catholic or you knew a Catholic because that is so on brand for her to just be like, yeah, God said so. And she's like, what about all the siblings that came after your dad? <laughs> what? If, I don't know if he left or if he died. I can't remember. And he was he like, left. yeah, she always just kind of said like, yeah, God's will. <laughs> i was like who is that lady fucking i thought she was whoring herself oh was she i missed it i think she was prostituting like i think she was oh rest in pieces queen <laughs> <laughs> i think i mean i've been known to draw vastly different conclusions and i've been known what... to miss details when i listen to audiobooks so oh, she also slapped him <gasps> i forgot about twice that. i know she felt so bad about it what even was the context for that? I don't even remember. I just remember the slap. Uh, I think he says something really gross. Mm -hmm. He says something really sexual. And I can't remember specifically what it was. And she just said, she was like, it felt so good. She was like, it just felt like she just like let it fly. And then like the next one. And then she like saw like the handprint. Oh yeah. And then we talked about at the beginning how the mustache. So like the entire thing was like the mustache growing back at the end. Mm -hmm. There's just so much. I mean, this is the longest I think we've talking, talking, talking. We do be talking. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you just? What do you mean? Um, that we've like talked about just like one. I mean, we've tangented all over the place. We we do be tangenting. <laughs> but like, we had like full ass conversations, multiple of them about this book. It was just like it fueled so, so much. Well written. I know. There's just so much of it to talk about. The slap. That was like the most sexual tension ever also. Yeah. And him knowing that that's what it was. I think there's like a, a, a and it's during the dancing scene or when it's starting and there's a mention of uh, he's chasing her around like a dog chases a cat with her like hissing at him and he knows yeah. that they're going to continue on. Like they're either yeah. going to have sex or kill each other. Like and he's the only one who knows that that's what needs to happen when he wouldn't think to do that. Yeah, because there was, like, a quote at the beginning how he was like, I'm going to have you or something. Or, like, it's going to. Well, because he know he's like, oh, we got to bang it out. We got it. Mm. What's it? Oh, Princess Diaries 2 with the fan. Oh, that movie really was. It, mm. it imprinted on me. Mm. I loathe you. I loathe you first. Oh, God. I saw an edit for The Princess Diaries 2 today. It was a <sighs> Taylor Swift edit of Anne Hathaway in that movie, and I was like, wow. What a hot-ass movie. Uh, truly. <sighs> Always got to think about Princess Diaries 2. So, the slap felt like her the little fan slap. The original Enemies to Lovers. Invented it really is. Enemies to Lovers. Actually, I lied to you. Benedict and, Benedict and Beatrice from Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. They invented Enemies to Lovers. I'm so sorry. However, the next blueprint up... Princess Diaries too. The second cousin once removed. Yes. yes. <laughs> they could marry each other. I don't want to be dramatic, um, but it is perhaps the best movie of all time. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, we currently have no plan for the episode next Friday. Something will happen. Something will happen. Um, you don't know because we're, we cut it out of this episode, but we went on a 20-minute tangent about some of our like favorite sex scenes in books, and like it was going nowhere, so... We decided to cut it and put it in our newsletter. Yep. It is a, it's a deleted scene. If you want to Yeah, it's a deleted scene, scene. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah. If so, not, I guess you can be a coward. <laughs> be a coward, but like 
Paris Hilton wouldn't say that's hot if she saw you. She would say that's a coward. <laughs> um, so listening to that episode would be that's hot of you. That's a coward. <laughs> but if you don't, that's a coward of you. So you can subscribe. Links are in the show notes. Um, do what your heart tells you. I bet it's telling you not to be a coward. So <laughs> just gonna make an ass and one ovary out of both of us and assume that <laughs> um, you're not a coward. I think the ovary discussion happens in a deleted <laughs> Out of context ovaries. <laughs> I really don't know. Who knows at this point. Um, the odds of me saying ovary in the deleted scene are high. <laughs> so. Yeah. The odds are good. It might be in this episode. I think it's in all of it. I think, think there's shades of ovaries everywhere. <laughs> it's ovaries. Ovaries and widgets just hanging out all over the place Ooh. this episode. Um. Mm. Thanks for listening. Yearn, thank you. <laughs> Yearn for some mud. <laughs> Yearn. <And you> can... <laughs> I'm a bit verklempt. Oh. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, go forth. Yearn, dance on tabletops, etc.